I know you, but uh, I'm the director of the Utah State Court Self Help Center. Thank you for your patience while we figure out these technological issues. Um, I'm here with Chris Baker, and we're going to give you an introduction to ourselves and our organizations. And then we're going to ask you some questions. If it's in a small group, I'd like to have more of a dialogue. We do have some backup material in case you don't talk at all, but I think we can make this possible. Well, and then we'll talk about some of the issues we have. And then we'll wrap up. Uh, Sure. Uh, my name is Nick Whitaker. I'm the outreach coordinator for uh, Utah 211. Uh, my background, I my master's degree in city and community policy planning, and get about a decade of experience of working with um, with the homeless population. And also uh, helped start the Salt Lake State Film Festival. Um, yeah, that's uh, it. I guess that would be important. Um, so 211, uh, 211 is a resource for anybody uh, to be connected to services that are relevant to any need that you have at, at, at any given time. Um, in Utah alone, there's over 9,000 service providers. What we do is we go and we get information on these uh, uh, providers, kind of uh, learn about what it is they offer, and make sure that the information we're getting is as accurate as possible. Then people can call in, um, say they're experiencing um, issues with um, uh, housing, they call us and, and talk to them, ask about uh, what services are available for rent assistance and we can keep up wherever you are with, with that service. Um, so yeah, so we try to tailor uh, available services to to so I work for the Utah State Court Self Help Center. I'm an editor player. I used to be a lawyer. Now I work at the courts. Um, the Self Help Center is a totally free resource. It's 100 percent free. People can call, text, or email. They get legal help with any legal issue at any step in the legal process. So somebody feels like they never thought and they want to start a small case, so we can help them with that. If somebody wants to file their life on how we can help them with exactly how to do this. So our services are available on any language. We speaks English and Spanish directly at self help center, but we can also get interpreters and that's also free. So we help basically what he does in the legal context. Um, since it's such a small group of this program and say people are what are they see it they would be parts. I'm Anna, I'm with the International Rescue Committee. Um, so we work uh, quite a lot with refugees that we have resettled in the US but then also um, any other person that might come into these um, legal services that means um, primarily immigration legal services, but quite often they have other legal needs as well. Um, we have a lot of um, economic empowerment um, programs as well to help people get loans for businesses or cars or homes. Um, and then we have a kind of whole health and case management side of things for our refugees at home that we settle. Um, and then we're a part of that Utah Immigration Collaborative that Alyssa was talking about. Um, so we actually, um, one of our staff answers the answers the phone. So um, yeah, we're here to be really relevant. And we get calls that that couldn't be served through the collaborative. We do get quite a lot of calls that um, are not actually immigration needs, but maybe other things or just other resources. My name is Nancy. I'm from Legal Aid Society of Salt Lake. We uh, help people in the third district for Salt Lake County with family law issues, predominantly custody and paternity or protect orders are our focus here. Uh, we also help anchor the pro se assisted calendars that if you are ever interested in practicing in those areas, the third district court is fantastic to volunteer with to help out these people. It's really just Practice of the law, but there is some of the best people to work with the lives. Nick Meekum, uh, I work for the mayor, the Salt Lake County Mayor's Office of Criminal Justice Initiatives. I work for the Criminal Justice Advisory Council as the Policies and Projects Coordinator. So sometimes this uh, means that I help staff work groups, sometimes it means I head those work groups up, and then we just have to try to drive the agenda of the Criminal Justice Advisory Council. Okay. Thanks, Thanks, John Puente. I am the director of the Office of Fairness and Accountability for the Utah Courts. And the charge of our office is pretty simple identify and remove racism and bias from the courts. 
I believe I met a couple of you with some WebEx calls. I, yeah, so. Meeting you in person. And if we need to meet, let's do so after this. Great. My name is Nicole Tomas. I'm the office manager in the Access to Justice office. So part of what I do is help connect um, general public with the public and receiving services from places like people in line. I think we kind of refer each other, but um, we connect people to traditional services with Roman clinics um, and affordable treatments. Well, I want to ask you, like, what are the questions or legal issues or where are you coming up with way too long of your journey of helping people where you're not sure what the political and it looks like where you send them? How did that manifest for you? You see a lot of people that um, do you want to have a name change or they need to do like a legal guardianship uh, in a situation. Or sometimes you know, uh, to get you like divorce kinds of proceedings, or even um, yeah, and, and custody issues with that sometimes. Yeah, um, and then we also just see a lot of just general legal questions that are outside of immigration, so we don't always know how to advise that. Yeah. Great. divorce, custody. Uh, well, we, we see like a lot of divorce and custody issues. Like we're beginning to dabble a little bit into guardianship, and I think a lot of people just don't quite understand the process. It's lost, I think, some of the it's lost in translation sometimes, but certain uh, subsets of the population as they're sort of trying to shift and focus on streamlining things. Um, so I think that's one thing where I, I'm just curious to see how we can better reach the Latinx communities. Um, I, I find oftentimes there's sometimes a cultural difference of the relative importance of getting your email in different subsections. And uh, that seems to be a major shift that, that, that we've gone through since March 13th of 2020 that everything's kind of gone and some people got left behind with that transition and everyone doesn't have the same uh, tech available or tech comfortable, whatever. Tech comes can't speak English very well. So, you know, there, there's lots of struggles going on in different points of the day. And uh, that, that's the thing that I'm most interested to see how we can kind of remedy that. Okay. Uh, I mean, I guess the thing that comes to mind immediately is I am currently heading up a government ID work group where we are trying to address the issue of getting vulnerable populations, but in particular homeless people, government ID or government issued real ID since we live in Utah. Uh, this is a real issue because a lot of the uh, barriers are basically a dog chasing its tail. For example, you can't get a birth certificate without a real ID. You can't get a real ID without a birth certificate. Uh, that's probably the lowest hanging fruit, but we got to figure out what, I mean, we got to figure out what the overarching problem is uh, and, and how to address it. So we got a lot of work to do on this issue. Yeah, that was, that was, that's, a, that's a real issue for sure. I think it's about that on that. Yeah, it's about your introductions. So it's kind of a different issue because I work at the courts and I have to remain neutral. So when folks come, you know, or approach us at, at my office, what we need to do is just know who we can send them to so they can get legal advice. Um, if, because we're limited in, the, in our role. Um, so that's why it goes kind of interesting here to see, you know, where that, and also working with other community-based organizations um, and seeing their needs and sometimes saying, hey, you know, we need to partner with me if it's so that it's like, other group. Um, but a lot, you know, what's been said, um, now I'm in the mindset of, you know, why they should just be, you know, kind of considered the sandbox because then they can open and give more than just immigration advice, right? They can do this, they can do that. But it's, it's kind of making those connections and working collaboratively and 
helping other organizations uh, better help their constituents. Our office, um, we have a lot of access and resources and, and help, but sometimes there's that language barrier where you know someone may speak something outside of Spanish, like a, a more pausing. So there, there are things that we do to try to help them find help, maybe through license hire or something like that. Typically, we can help in a mental health service through one of our legal clinics. But that's that's a challenge I get sometimes. Somebody calls and says, says do you speak Spanish? Well, but he that helps are are you know receptionists now. But I'd like to see a translation service that works a little better that can help us get the resources. Right. So I heard a lot of different things. I heard family life, things may change, divorce, custody, guardianship stuff. I heard how to reach out to other communities, especially Spanish speaking populations, uh, how to reach other groups, uh, how to be careful when ideas an issue, and then just kind of be aware of where to send folks and kind of deal with language barriers. So those are the things that you all have grown out of that we're supposed to say, here's where to reach that. That's, that's the game we're playing, right? Uh, well, just to sort of one of the things that the self help center does, in addition to being a resource, maybe the all text email and there's phone, uh, business cards here with our phone number, uh, our email address, and our text line. I also got IDs that you should take with you that have links to our website, which I'm showing you here. Our website has a ton of resources, including information on how you might name change. Um, I'm a little bit happy because the Supreme Court last year said you could also change your people gender marker uh, at your section. Uh, so we have a page that explains that, or just a simple name change for the digital health, if one providers. Most of our pages have information on here's the process, here's some basic things you should know about it, and then at the bottom of the page are forms. Form right now, here's what we wanted to do a name change, relatively easy. One thing that's complicated about a name change, sometimes people say, I want to do a name change. What they actually want to do is have somebody else be the legal father of that child. And so it, it's actually a little bit more complicated than that. So sometimes you think it's going to be a simple name change, but actually what's going on is they want to have somebody else bio dad, not the legal dad. And that's a totally different process called heritage that, depending on how uh, amicable the relationship with the parties, can be really easier because it's complicated. Um, so that's the kind of thing that. We can actually get into the self help center a lot of times and ask people, why are you doing that? What's going on? What's happening here? We want to change the name. Because sometimes it's, oh, I just want to change the name. I want to go by Bobby. Sometimes it's just more complicated things. So we like to ask those questions and be really nosy and think, why are you doing that? Make sure that we're going in the right direction. That's the kind of help that we provide. Um, with regard to divorce, there's a divorce page. There's also a roadmap that explains sort of what to expect. How the process starts, how the process proceeds. Divorce can be really complicated, as you can see by looking at this with all the different uh, steps in the way. The someone centered model is take this next step, use these resources, and then get back into it. So we're not saying when they call us, here's the answer, go away, or they call us again. What we're saying is here's resources, read that, get back in touch with questions you have. Now you're ready for this, do that, do that. So the idea is they're going away and coming back into this interaction. But we interact with the self-help center people. Try to follow up with an email or a text message that includes links and includes some of we talked about so they know what happens next. It's not just if you take notes of everything I said, it's try to be as accessible as possible. We'll write those emails in English Spanish and we'll just put our we also have information on guardianship. And there's a page here that explains they have a lot of information about guardianship. Uh, there's information that people think about what kind of guardianship is appropriate for them, and the information to ask about the military that either serving or or guardian. One of the things uh, that people get confused about is they might think they need guardianship, but maybe they're not sure using it as leader, or maybe they just need conservatorship. The idea behind those sorts of legal tools is you're supposed to use the, the most least invasive tool for what's going on in the 
Absolutely, yeah. Um, I think everybody kind of cross sectionally, you know, touched into into some um, some areas that uh, uh, social services are, are definitely going to be needed. Um, and just going to start with the one that stuck out the most because it's something I dealt with a lot when we looked at homeless services. Now this issue of getting a, a state ID card, um, and because when you think about it. A state ID card is necessary, not just, um, uh, you know, to prove really, you know, who you are, but also when you're applying for housing, you need ID. When you're applying for a lot of social services, you need ID. So if you don't have that, you are really out of luck. And if you don't know how to access that, well, that's that's really that's not good. So. In that situation, uh, something that that um, that you want to offer, and I'm 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 sorry, it was your name, Nick. Yeah. Um, one thing that um, that you you might be able to do, Nick, um, or or your staff, or, or whoever you work with, when you're working with someone who needs help getting ID, um, get on the phone, just dial two one one with them. Um, I mean, you, they could do it on their own, sure. Um, but you can also you can also do it with them or on behalf of them if you'd like. I mean, when you call in, you can. I mean, we're not clinically staffing things, but we can kind of staff the situation with you and talk about uh, all the various services that are available, like um, you know, like accessing identification through uh, uh, the Beacons, uh, Beacon Center, um, some other uh, resources too that can help with that. But that's actually a question that we get a lot from people calling in asking how to, how to get that. And there are a few places to, to do that. Um, and again, a lot of times, too, people who are calling in for that type of help um, are in a very stressed situation. They're experiencing a lot of stress. And when you're experiencing a lot of stress, the ability to plan kind of goes out the window. I mean, you're, you're kind of it's fight or flight at that point in the end. Being able to see it tomorrow is very difficult. Um, again, calling 211, we have professionals who can take that call and, and you know, walk them through it in a pace that's comfortable for them so we can help them plan this out and get it taken care of quickly. Because a lot of times uh, when you know you need items for housing and support, it's very time sensitive. Um, so there is that. <laughs> Question. Um, I kind of remember the other question. Um, oh, I, with um, IRC. Um, and, and I'm sorry, just kind of talking directly to individuals here. Um, with uh, the IRC, do you ever utilize 211 at all? Uh, I think so. I think probably our caseworkers do. Okay. Um, and I, I know that we've known about it as a resource, and certainly the, um, the uh, immigration collaborative, that's a, like a resource that we've given out that we told people to use. Okay. Uh, but for the ADA at home, we connect to people at the border. We're on the phone with them. We do a conference call to one more. And, and that's I, I, I'm, I'm glad you brought up being a conference call to one because that's always an option. A lot of a lot of people just think that the person in need is the only person you can call. I mean, really, you can call on behalf of. I mean, you could be living in another state and you could call on behalf of a friend because you're worried about them and you want to get some information on various services available. So, I mean, you could really um, contact two one one with the client without them. Also, another thing too is, is I would be happy to do um, uh, um, to come and do trainings um, with with any staff um, to talk about um, you know other ways to, to utilize two one one rather than just um, calling or going to the website. Though the website is very helpful in calling, you can usually you know you can link up what you need. Um, but I think. One of the best parts of 21 is, is its ability to really, I mean, you can really tailor services to needs. Because again, as I mentioned at the beginning, there's over 9,000 service providers in the state. And I mean, I mean that, that, 
that's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing when you're trying to figure out uh, what to do, especially with an issue that's very time sensitive. Um, so that, that is available uh, uh, for myself or for someone else in the organization can come in and kind of do a, a tailored uh, uh, training to the needs of your organization. Um, um, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, but you had mentioned um, um, access uh, with uh, language barriers and um, uh, uh, applications moving online. That is a huge issue, especially in housing um, and among the aging population. So a lot of services now among the aging population are all being pushed onto online platforms. And that's a, a large population of, of individuals who aren't always familiar with, with navigating the internet. Again, we can uh, we can help with that. We can get on the phone with that person. We get them on the phone with us. We have uh, uh, bilingual uh, representatives who can uh, talk with our goal is whoever, um, regardless of, of, of the language they speak. Um, and then also guide them through the process. Because again, going back to that panic or stress, it becomes very difficult. Uh, Oh, five minutes. Yeah, sorry. Oh, I will stop. I can keep going. It's staff on us right now. I, I'm, I'm jumping into this panic mode. I'll stop myself. Right yeah, I think that the other thing that I thought was needed to one one is their website. It's similar to ours, but so if you need to navigate it on yourself, put some other resources online, right? So you type your zip code, you type in your account, or you type your county, and you say what you need, and it pulls a bunch of resources for you. It's similar to our website where it can start in here and from the course homepage. If you just click self help down at the course homepage, it's going to be .com. And check down here is self help. And that means you're going to find the information you're looking for. You want to run the website at twitter.org. From here, you can again type in what county you're in. A center layer tells me that I can choose whatever topic I need help with, and it will pull up resources specific to what I need help with. It tries to fill you down more specifics. And then, I'm sorry, as you get more specific to it, and, and when you get to the organization level, and um, we, we try to, to give the most accurate description. Um, we were just uh, ARIS certified um, just uh, you know, last month. Which, uh, so the information that we're providing is going to be, uh, we're, we strive to make it as accurate and, and sort of uh, that represents the organization. Very recent, so the information is going to be about likely quite recent. And you all have bilingual staff, also, we do, right? Yeah. Staff, yes. and I don't know that too much. All of our resources, almost all of our self help pages are available in Spanish. So people can go and read on it directly in Spanish. I think sometimes at the legal clinic, you can say, you can read this information and let's talk to your questions about it. Help get the forwarders or what questions you're about to read in this. That's a way to use our tools to help you use the time more efficiently. Yeah, okay. Can I just say, so my favorite thing about Ford's website, you know, it's in Espanol presently, but it's that quick escape. For people who are in crisis, you click on that, you show over like skate parks. It's these people who are trying to navigate possibly a divorce, a personal safety issue, a protective order. I think this is a fabulous thing. And I think a lot of people should consider that on their own websites because if you're looking out to get away from an abusive relationship, it's about power. And if they see you're trying to get out of it, and that's like, so I think this is a beautiful parachute for these people in falling out of control. And our fair space, we try to make our be as responsive as possible to feedback we get. So if you see problems or issues, with it, just let's start sending out to get your feedback on it. And I just had a conversation with someone yesterday saying, you know, this is kind of confusing here until we already have uh, exit materials. Yeah, and I, I, I'm glad that you uh, you brought that up too. That you know, um, you know speaking of the abusive relationship, and people really need something that, that makes sense in front of them in those moments. Uh, because really, trying to make sense of things when they're going through crisis is, is quite difficult. Um, and again, to a good two on one, if you uh, if you are uh, operators, you can contact them 24-7, and uh, 
they're trained to take crisis situation. Oh, the crisis situation is not but um, a, the way that we have that our staff handles the calls is very, um, it's in line with trauma informed care, where it's we're speaking to the trauma and not you know, pointing to the buzz we have, or trying to make it a very comfortable experience. I don't know that's too far. I can't get it wrong here. I don't have to tell Trump speech. That one's hard. That's fine. That's a tough one. Yeah. Anyway, are there questions or comments that you want to share? Both groups? Um, one of the things that I do at Selma Center is when I am not sure about a resource that I or haven't met before, I like, will call myself. How I've never called someone one before. I've called legal aid help my before. I've called the bar stuff before. Just find something to provide us to know about it. And, um, you're welcome to call us if you want to see how self help center works. Yeah. It's definitely a good resource. Same with the course website, the resource you have online, you're welcome to play with it. And I very much do love feedback. So if there's something that is confusing, something you don't like, I'm happy to talk about it. Um, we're hopefully ready to start working on revising the self help pages and making our entire online presence more user friendly in a way that other ways the time can be limited. That's a big project. I I believe you and I had a conversation a couple of weeks ago. I'm sure you remember this. And, and, and I apologize if this wasn't you. I swear it was. And it was about um, uh, the day that we did the expungement or you know, I'm, maybe I should stop myself. No, I think we're talking about clean slate. Yes, that's what it was. Um, so I, um, I just want to uh, acknowledge what you mentioned at the beginning of this too, of having to remain kind of neutral. Um, even, and this is where 211 can be very helpful, especially when people are, are, are trying to um, trying to get information specific to their needs when, you, when you're trying to be very neutral and not tip those scales. Um, and it, 2 and one is, is a great resource to send them to because we can we can be that person who can, can break that neutrality and and um, and help them without you know, giving them the idea that we're acting in behalf of the court system or, or, or another organization. Um, and again, we, we're always um, happy to take calls um, uh, with the service provider and you with the client together um, to problem solve or or even talk to the service provider one-on-one -on -one regarding the issue. If, you know, if we can't help, then we can try our hardest to, to find somebody who can. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you.